guys, welcome back to Parade. I'm Rose from Cheap Lazy Vegan, where I make easy and affordable vegan recipes, and today I am super excited for this special challenge. Today's vegan recipe challenge is presented by Crime Scene Kitchen, the all new competition series where America's best bakers think like detectives but bake like pastry chefs. Don't miss the series premiere Wednesday at 9 8 central on Fox. So, in the spirit of the show, I'm going to think like a detective today and make a vegan dessert out of the mystery ingredients in this box. So I don't know what I'm supposed to bake, uh, but I will let the ingredients in here uh, give me the clues that I need. So let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to unbox this box. I actually have no idea what's in here. I, I'm nervous, but here we go. Ooh, it's very nicely packaged. Okay, it's a mystery box. Everything's packaged individually. Oh my God, what is this? Is it red food coloring? Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so that's the first ingredient. I think it's red food coloring. <laughs> apricot jam. <laughs> what do I do with apricot jam? Oh. oh, there isn't much. There isn't much to work with. Marzipan? Is this vegan? I guess it is. <laughs> Marzipan. Okay, that's the third ingredient, and now I'm more nervous than I ever have been before. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a little ponder session, just a little 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 think session before we uh, before we jump in because yeah, am I am I allowed to Google? All right, you guys. So after much thought and also a little bit of googling. Not gonna lie, I have figured out the mystery. I have unlocked the mystery, if you will, of these three mysterious ingredients put in front of me. And I figured out that the dessert that I need to make is a Battenberg cake. So it seems that a Battenberg cake uh, comes from England. It is a light sponge cake with different sections held together with jam. It's covered in marzipan, displays a distinctive two by two check pattern colored pink and yellow. The mystery is solved. So the problem is now how to make a Battenberg cake, how to make it vegan, and how to make it so that I can actually make it because it seems to be quite um, aesthetically pleasing and I'm very well known for not making aesthetically pleasing desserts. Um, but yeah, make it vegan and also make it easier so it'll be kind of like a hopefully lazier version of a Battenberg cake. So for this cake, first of all, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're gonna add the dry ingredients into a large mixing bowl. So we're gonna start with two cups of all-purpose flour. So normally guys, I would use uh, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, but because I wanna add a little bit of almond into this, I'm actually going to add half a cup of almond flour. So we're doing two cups of all-purpose and half a cup of almond flour. If not, you can just use two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm kind of hoping that this is gonna work because almond flour is a little bit different consistency than regular flour, so we'll find out if this works. And also the color. Hopefully the food coloring will, will still do the magic. Okay, so next we have one and a half cups of white sugar. And then we're gonna add two teaspoons of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt. So those are the dry ingredients. And then we're gonna just quickly whisk this together. There we go. So now, oh God, oh God, this is stressful. Okay. So now we're gonna take another bowl and we're gonna add the wet ingredients into this bowl. So I'm gonna actually use some vegan butter and this is just melted vegan butter. It seems that again, butter is a big part of this whole Battenberg fiasco. So we're gonna add two third cup of melted vegan butter. You can use oil as well, but I'm trying to get that, ooh, that buttery uh, flavor, okay? And then the next ingredient is going to be one third cup of non-dairy milk. Now I'm using almond milk because we want that almondy flavor. Again, I'm not really sure how important the almond flavor is, but you know, we're just gonna use almond milk, but you can, again, use any non-dairy milk of your choice. Next, we're gonna do a quarter cup of lemon juice and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. You could probably use almond extract as well. So we're gonna mix this. And then we just pour the wet ingredients into the dry. So let's just do this. Let's pour the wet ingredients into the dry and then you just wanna mix it. But don't over mix it. I always find it funny when people say, don't over mix it. I'm like, I don't really know exactly what that means. Am I over mixing it? Probably not. Okay, I think we got it. I'm gonna pour half of it into a different bowl. 
okay? This is where it gets tricky. And then we're actually going to use food coloring. So this is where one of the mystery ingredients comes to life. And I've also stained my finger, fantastic. So I'm just gonna drop in some food coloring. <laughs> I think this might be one of my first times using food coloring when I'm making food. So that's some red food coloring. I think I'm supposed to turn this into a pink sort of color. Oh, I think I may have used a little too much. Oh, it's basically red, fantastic. I'm gonna add a little more <laughs> of this to uh, make this less red. Ooh, see, it's already pretty. I could bake it like this. Just swirl it, you know? Maybe I'll just make swirls. So now guys, what I'm gonna do is take a muffin pan. So normally you would bake this in like a square pan and you would divide the square pan and bake the two separately so that you're getting the two different colors. But like I said, I'm doing a bit of a lazy version and my lazy version means I'm just gonna use a muffin pan. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to grease the muffin pan, make sure it is nicely greased and now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to spoon layers of each. So I'm just gonna take maybe two spoonfuls of the white batter, do a layer of that. And then we're gonna do uh, two spoonfuls of the pink batter. Let me know if you guys have tried a Battenberg cake because I don't believe I ever have. Even though I actually lived in the UK for a couple of years, I have not tried the Battenberg cake. Okay, so we got we got layer and layer, and now we're doing another layer. I'm kind of excited for this now. So now we're doing another layer of the pink. And now we're getting a nice like kind of swirl sort of situation going on. I'm not sure how this will look once it's baked, but we will find out together. All right, you guys. So now we have my little swirly cakes. So what we want to do is we're gonna bake this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes until you can poke a toothpick in and it comes out clean. So that is what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna throw this in the oven and then when it's in the oven, we can work on some other things. So while the cake is baking or the cupcakes or muffins, whatever you wanna call them, I'm gonna create a bit of a marzipan drizzle because normally I think you have to like shape the marzipan around the cake and I just, I don't have faith in myself to do that. So instead, I'm actually gonna take some marzipan and I actually kind of forgot what marzipan tastes like. Mmm, delicious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this um, marzipan. I mean, do I need this whole thing? I probably don't. And yeah, so you can like mold this and you know, be fancy with it, but I'm not very fancy. So I'm gonna make a drizzle with the marzipan. And what I'm hoping for is I'm gonna drizzle it over the muffin or the cupcakes or the cake, and then it's gonna cool and then it's gonna kind of sit nicely anyways so i took about half of the marzipan and i'm gonna cut it up a little bit into smaller pieces and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually melt this with a little bit of non-dairy milk and then it'll be easy to drizzle it hopefully that's my hope okay so now what we want to do is just take a saucepan and just throw in our marzipan and we're just gonna melt it with i'm just using about two tablespoons of non-dairy milk Woo! And then we're just gonna kind of let this melt. It's in marzipan, almond paste, sugar. Okay, it's basically almonds and sugar. Ooh, it is melting, yay. So we're basically just thinning out the marzipan and just making it so that it's easy to drizzle, which I'm sure is not the point of marzipan. I think the point is to like be able to mold it and shape things, but this is fine. So if you are missing the Battenberg cake, <laughs> and you don't know how to make it easy, then this might work. We'll find out. So I actually decided to make more of the marzipan drizzle. So basically I'm using a total of 250 grams of marzipan and four tablespoons of non-dairy milk. So just cause I have quite a few cakes, you know, I wanna make sure that I'm getting enough of the marzipan. So that is how you do it. I'm just basically doing the same thing that I just did. There we go, I'm just gonna turn the heat off now. We might have to reheat it once the cake is done, but there you go, that's how you make that marzipan drizzle. I'm gonna taste it. Mmm, delicious, super sweet and delicious. Okay, so now all we have to do is just wait for the cake to bake. 
All right, you guys, so here is the uh, finished product. As you can see here, um, this one is missing because uh, it was very ugly. I tried to take it out before it was cooled down and it just broke, okay? So hopefully now I can take this out. Oh God. Um, let me just try. Do I need to like punch this? That's great. Okay, so that broke. Ooh, kind of, kind of success. Okay. There's one. <laughs> okay, broke again. It's not gonna be as pretty as a uh, Battenberg cake. I will tell you that already. It's the taste that counts. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. Okay. I tried, my friends. I tried. Here we go. Now how can I make this pretty? All right, so what I'm gonna do, guys, so I'm gonna plate one of them like, eh, looks pretty, looks pretty. So one of them will be upside down, one of them will be right side up. So now we're gonna add some of this jam. The apricot jam, which seems to be an important part of the Battenberg cake. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna add some, just kind of spread a little bit on the top portion. And then here as well, I wonder why they use apricot jam specifically. And now guys, let's pour that marzipan. I'm just gonna drizzle. I'm gonna call this a deconstructed Battenberg cake. How's that? Yeah, deconstructed Battenberg cake. Fancy. There you go. So it definitely won't be as pretty as an actual Battenberg cake, but hopefully it'll be just as tasty. All right guys, so in order for me to decorate the top, I decided to add some uh, almond grounds. I feel like that'll make this a little bit prettier. So I'm just putting some almonds into a food processor. You can also just use like, I don't know, ground up almonds if you have it. Okay, let's go. All right, that's it. So we ground up some almonds. So now we have something to decorate this cake with, okay? So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of the almonds. Ooh, see? There you go, that's the final touch. That's the final touch. There you go. All right, you guys, so now I'm ready to do the taste test and you guys have to look at how beautiful the inside looks. See, it's what's on the inside that counts, okay? So we're gonna give this a taste. Mmm. I mean, I don't know what a Battenberg cake is supposed to taste like, but what I can say is this is super delicious. The marzipan is nice and sticky and the cake is super soft. And I mean, I think it looks pretty as well. It's so good. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. So yeah, that was my kind of deconstructed version of a vegan Battenberg cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really think that it turned out really well and I even like the aesthetic of this um, and the taste was so good. I'm very happy with myself, actually. I don't know if I'll win this competition, but I'm happy with myself and I'm happy with this dessert. I hope you guys try this out. If you love this video, then you'll definitely love watching America's Best Bakers, thinking like detectives and making some delicious desserts. So do not miss the series premiere of Crime Scene Kitchen on Wednesday at 9, 8 central on Fox. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can check out my channel as well, which is Cheap Lazy Vegan. And yes, yeah, See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.